Thanks for dropping in. Last week, I expanded my collection of puzzle box designs with this, the 3D printed Super Mario Brothers inspired brick block puzzle box. In this video, I'll show you how to print and assemble your own copy. But first, the spoiler warning. Watching this assembly video will reveal the solution to this puzzle. If you'd prefer to solve this puzzle on your own, share this video with a 3D printing friend so they can make a spoiler free copy for you. Still here? All right. I've already printed a few of these puzzles. So to keep things interesting and make the assembly video easier to follow, I'll be building a 200% scale copy. Yeah, this thing's going to be big. Printing this puzzle is pretty easy. The model was designed with minimal overhangs, so it shouldn't need supports. The only tricky piece might be the lid. That part has a few long bridging sections. Depending on your printer's capabilities, you can print the bridge as is, add slicer generated supports, or select an alternate pre-supported version that includes a few sections that you can pop out after the print is done. Finally, add a brim if your printer has any issues with curling, especially with prints that have sharp corners. Now that we have all the 3D printed parts, we do need a few bolts to keep everything together. Fortunately, I kept this design pretty loose, so you'll have a range of valid bolt sizes to work with this project. To lock level one and two together, we'll need two M3 bolts that are between six and 15 millimeters long. To connect level three, we'll need a single M3 bolt that's between six and 18 millimeters long. For this 200% scale print, I'm going to double these to M6 bolts. The next bit is optional, but improves how the puzzle works. You'll need 15 cylinder magnets that are three millimeters in diameter and three millimeters tall. For this larger build, I'm switching this out to six millimeter by three millimeter magnets. Anything larger would probably be too strong. You can either build the core of the puzzle first and then glue all the bricks on, or you can add the bricks first. Each level of the puzzle has tiny grooves that help you align the bricks. In some spots, these grooves are enough to hold the bricks in place, even without glue. But I'm going to glue them in anyway, just to reduce the chance that the wiggling part would confuse the puzzle solver. In addition to these rounded grooves, each level has these smaller square notches. These are here solely as indicators to show where brick should start and where it should end. The top and bottom levels are a little bit different than the other two. They use these end bricks, which when you snap them on, wrap around above and below the level. They also take these center bricks, which snap into this small square hole, like so. With these tips in mind, adding the bricks is mostly self-explanatory. However, if this is the first time you're assembling this puzzle, you may want to test fit all the parts first, just to make sure everything's in the right spot. All right, all the bricks are done. The central core of the puzzle is built from the bottom up. So find level one, which is the part that looks like this. We'll also need these two slider pieces. Before we start any serious assembly, make sure that both sliding pieces fit and slide smoothly in these tracks. If they're too tight, just a little bit of sanding on the side of each slider should fix that. With the test fitting done, we're going to add some magnets. Keeping track of the orientation of these magnets is extremely important, so I've placed them into a single stack and marked one end. If this doesn't make sense to you yet, it will shortly. Level 1 has four magnet holes, here, 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 and here. As you're gluing them in, make sure you're holding the magnet stack facing with a marked side up. That way we know that all of these are oriented in the same direction. The sliding piece that has a peg has one magnet hole on top. We want to glue this in with the same orientation as the others. Both sliders have one magnet hole each on the bottom. When you insert these magnets, make sure the mark side is face down, so they all have the opposite orientation as all the other magnets. Once the glue is completely set, we can go ahead and add the sliders back into the base. If all the magnets are oriented correctly, you will feel the sliders snap into place when this little peg reaches various intersections along this maze.
These magnets really help the movement feel a lot nicer, so I highly recommend adding them. Level 2 is a lot easier to assemble. All we have to do is set it on top of level 1. Like this. Because of this little sliding piece that pokes out from level 1, there's only one possible orientation that this will fit. Now we're going to take two bolts to lock layer 1 and layer 2 together. They slide into these little bolt holes on either side of this circle. I'm just screwing right into the plastic, but you could also use heat set threaded inserts if that feels too loose. If you've never heard of those before, I'll link to a video from Stefan from CNC Kitchen that talks all about them. There's also four magnet holes on level two that match up with four holes on the bottom of level three. As before, orientation of magnets is very important. So I'm going to glue all four magnets in level two with the mark side up and then insert all the magnets in level three with the mark side facing down. If you've added all the magnets correctly, level three will snap right onto level two, like this. Now we're going to add these two latches onto level three. The teeth of each latch should be facing the center of the level, like so. Now we're going to add the pinion gear, which is just a little bit tricky because it will only fit on the central post if it's oriented with the correct side up. So if you're having some difficulty lining this up with the post and it doesn't quite fit on, chances are just flip it upside down and now it will fit. Next, we're going to slide on the cover in order to slip it underneath the latches, you may need to lift them up slightly. And then everything will fit in place. Next, we'll take our last bolt and lock all of this down. All right, all we have left to do is to solve the puzzle so we can add the lid. Don't forget to add a prize before sealing it back up. And there we go, another puzzle assembled. It's not actually that difficult in assembly once you get past all those brick pieces. Good luck, and until next time, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for dropping in.